I think there's just time to show you this tricky corner here and how I surface it. So a few tips then. First of all, the curves, I've changed them to a degree six single span, both of them. I've added a curve actually here. So previously with the profile blend we had a curve there and a second curve was there. And I've put a curve in here. Always use construction planes. You can't do this type of intricate work without being very, very accurate and having things planarized. And then you'll see, if I go into draw style, what I've done is I've selected these circles for my icons, CV icons on the curves, to differentiate between the icons uh, for the CVs in the surface. And there I've, as you can see, I've just gone for the small dots. A few tips. This is a square. Uh, it's it's degree, if I just pick the surface and have a look at it, it's degree 7 in this direction and it's degree 6 in this direction. So it matches the curves, that's very important. Because to get the curvature you have to slide the CVs on the curve in order to uh, get a, a kind of even a hull distribution, this is still not quite right yet as you can see. Uh, to get curvature. And then there's one more CV hull left, which is that one, which is the floating CV hull, which has got nothing to do with the curvature here or there. That is to say the G2 curvature. It has an effect on the G3 curvature, which we might have time to have a quick look at. So icons, large icons on your curves, and I use this tool here, by the way, to align my curves a lot of the time the project tangent adjustment and with that you use the square to adjust this CV to slide it backwards and forwards and the circle to adjust the G2 CV which is that one. So tangent CV is the square, G2 CV is the circle. Right, so I can do that for you now. Pick that one. You see how we can adjust it. Okay. And as you adjust it this will update. The reason it's not updating is because I've used the curvature align tool there. Now I've added two spans into this surface, which is acceptable as it's a tertiary surface and uh, you have to be realistic with ki time constraints that you can have uh, in industry. You can't always mess around with single span surfaces in these uh, you know, kind of very tight corners like that. It's a very tricky corner so I've compromised and I've put two spans in there and I've got a larger surface as a result which is nice because you don't want these tiny little surfaces that you get with the uh, systems blend tools. Okay now if we view the model with shading on you'll see that this is the area here and you see how how smooth it is. It's much much better than it was before with the with the systems blend there. So now what I'm going to do is just show you how to move the floating uh, CV row. Okay, so going to, oh, I need uh, Shift X and I want Hull and a new V, I think. Uh, or maybe I'll slide it to start with. So let's pick that Hull. So just make sure we get the right one. Tangent G2 and floating Hull is that one. Okay, we can move that around. And you notice by sliding it, it doesn't have a drastic effect on highlights. It has a slight effect here. You watch this highlight here. Let's get in a lot bigger for you. And we'll get rid of that for the moment. Okay. Uh, but where it does have a lot of effect is if we go to NUV. And now we have to come down here and put in some sensitivity. So we'll go to 100 there. And you'll see how we can change the shape of the surface. Now if I put some evaluation shading on you see how I can improve the flow of my surface. So this is probably what I want there. You know that's typical typical of a good surface. Uh, there's a bit of a breakdown here but I can come back later on and I can kill the history on this surface and I can just direct model individual CVs to improve that transition there. So that's the most difficult patch explained. The rest uh, are going to be easy compared to that one. 
I've just quickly put in those square surfaces and I want to give you a few tips on on how to do that. As you can see I've put in more curves, more planes and more curves. Uh, I use blend curves initially because they give you a very accurate curvature uh, with relation to the apparent surfaces and then I change them up here to the degree that I require which in this case happens to be degree 6 single span curves. Then I line them using the project tangent adjustment and remember when you do that, let's see if we can do that now there we are you need to select curvature there when you've got curvature you get that round uh, manipulator box there when you've got tangent you just get the square and then what you have to do is get the tangent and G2CV you have to scale them up and down the curve in order to get the surfaces to update and for the hulls to align. So you see here the hulls align beautifully all the way through there. And it's not that difficult if you take care building your curves and you make sure that the curves all have the CVs in the same place. So if I pick some curves now we can have a look at that. Trolls on. You can see how useful it is for us to have these these circles instead of the same having the same icon as, as the curve has so it's very easy to see the alignment of your and you see they don't actually align the hulls on the on the squares don't actually align uh, to each curve CV but they are influenced absolutely influenced by them so there it is so it's very very nice isn't it once you've built the square transition patches. So hopefully now if you're building these squares they're looking something like this a lot nicer and then if we toggle the model we see that we have beautiful G3 continuous flow of curvature through there so you know it's a very nice transitional surface. Well, I haven't spent much time on it and it isn't really finished but I think hopefully I've shown you all the basics moves that you've got to make in order to get there. So that's the finished job and this is what we're looking for this highlight flowing around there that beautiful G3 curvature. take this come in the evaluator highlight control set it to visual hit go and now you can see the highlights from any angle uh, you wish by using this manipulator and if we could just move in and do a bit of analyzing we can see we've got our G3 flying through here we can see we've got a problem area there because I haven't really given that much attention yet and you can see it's all very smooth here. The tool I use most uh, for final evaluation is this tool and I'm just going to show you the visual curves here like so and once again it has a manipulator we need to go into perspective and then we can use these axis manipulators to view our surface conditions here that's quite nice if I hide manipulator and you see this is proof of our G3. This is the most accurate feedback. I'm going to just uh, turn off layer symmetry to make it clearer. And you can see it's all very nice, isn't it? Very nice transition. Well, I hope that you found that useful and that you're going to be able to include some of the things that I've shown you uh, in your own workflow. And thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch my video. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you.